I was just part of this really cool event at Air Miners this week, and I wanted to share kind of how it shifted some of my perspective and my thinking. So the event was on modeling supply curves for carbon removal. Maybe you attended it, but it was as a little bit of background. It was about modeling uh, using using the data from the Stripe applications, the first batch of companies that applied. All that data is open source. They they published it about kind of what price they were hitting, how that how they were planning on growing, you know, when they thought they could hit certain price points. And so a group went through a group from Airminers went through and. and analyze all that data and, and said, you know, here, here's kind of what we see is in terms of the trends and here's what we can take away from studying these, these startup companies that are pulling carbon from the air. So one of the other things that's super interesting about this group, by the way, is that they started out as part of one of the climate sprints that John Sanchez helped put together. These are usually called problem packs, um, but basically it was just a, a, a simple statement about, you know, let's dig into uh, carbon supply modeling and a bunch of people got together and worked on it. Uh, over the course of the climate sprint. And what it turned into was this really cool research project, uh, which they now have presented at Airmanners. So that's a little bit of background about, about kind of where that came from, which I think is fascinating. Um, but more importantly, diving into what they, they talked about in terms of the supply of carbon removal credits really got me thinking. So I wanted to share some thoughts. Uh, the biggest thing I'm wondering coming out of the Airminers supply curve session was around the, the the terms natural and engineered. And as you know, these are, these are terms that I've been kind of wary of using just because when I'm, when I'm looking through startup companies at, at Airmines Launchpad or, or helping advise teams, it, it doesn't seem like they, they come up to be that that useful, like whether a team is doing something that they call natural or doing something they call, call engineered. Um, and so what was interesting is this came up in the supply, uh, supply curve discussion in the sense that um, what they said during their presentation was that, in general, what, what people call natural solutions generally uh, have, they, they, they take carbon uh, dioxide and they, they hold on to it on the order of, you know, a year to, to 100 years, on the order of hundreds of years. Um, and there are, there are things that people call natural solutions that, that store carbon for longer periods than that, but generally they kind of cluster in this hundreds of years uh, kind of timeline. And then... Uh, there are what people call engineered solutions, and generally those seem to store carbon for on the order of thousands or tens of thousands of years. Uh, and there are certainly like engineered solutions that seem to store carbon for uh, much shorter periods of time. But overall, that's kind of you know, and this, this really got me thinking because I'm super curious about this. Like, what are we actually talking about? What we're talking about is permanence. How long is your solution pulling carbon from the atmosphere? Now you might say, okay, well, we obviously just want like all these things that do that pull carbon from the atmosphere for as long as possible. But that's not right. Actually, given the given the current state of, of the solutions, the funding for this stuff, we really do need solutions that pull carbon from the air for hundreds of years. And we also need solutions that pull it from the air for thousands of years and, and beyond. The benefit of these uh, kind of shorter term solutions on the order of hundreds of years is they have all these other side benefits. So for a simple example, if you create a new forest uh, and that grows up and it pulls carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, that has all these side benefits. It makes the place nicer to live. It makes it more of an ecosystem for uh, for other natural systems. It holds on to water, uh, water systems. So there's like all these other side benefits uh, that these kind of more uh, short-term, uh, generally natural solutions have. One of the challenges for longer-term solutions is uh, that they might not have that. If you're if you're taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and injecting it into basalt rock, no, you know that doesn't really help the basalt rock or help the people around the basalt rock or any, nobody's really getting anything out of it. Besides the most important thing, which is pulling carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So it kind of has this advantage where it's it's taking carbon from the air over a longer period of time, but it has a disadvantage that it's not really kind of connected to the to the rest of the ecosystem uh, longer term. And so that can be a challenge for uh, for these these uh, solutions that are that are looking longer term, uh, pulling carbon longer term is that the economic impact of the kind of capitalistic uh, frame for it might be more challenging because it really depends on carbon markets, whereas uh, kind of these these shorter term solutions actually can can benefit from uh, creating a, an ecosystem and, and getting other benefits that they can potentially capitalize on. Another way to look at it is that uh, solutions to pull carbon from the air for a few hundred years are they're they're cheap, 
We generally know how to do it. We don't really know how to scale these things too well, but it's cheap, it's fast, and we have some idea of how to, how to scale it. Um, what therefore we need to do is we need to continue keeping them cheap. We need to uh, continue it, uh, keeping it fast, but we need to figure out how to scale those things. You know, further up on the permanent scale, uh, in terms of tens of thousands of years, uh, those, those solutions are currently expensive, they're slow, uh, and we really don't have a working clue about how to make it all work. We have little little clues, but you know, not, not, we don't really have it all figured out. So obviously what we need to do there is we need to figure out how to lower the cost, we need to make it faster, and we need to really figure that out. So overall the point is, natural technology, whatever you call it, what matters is how long does your solution pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Again, longer isn't necessarily better, there's, there's trade-offs. Overall, we need a thousand shots on goal. Some will be gray, some will be green, some will pull carbon from the air for seconds, days, years, decades, hundreds of years, tens of thousands of years, millions of years. A thousand shots on goal means we need to go after all of those because wherever it is, we were so bad across the board at all of these that we need a ton of work to start making progress on this. One thing I want to add, though, is I'm not saying people need to reevaluate their solutions. If you're really into natural solutions or engineered solutions, that's great. Go for it. Like, use that passion, use that connection to, uh, to, to further your own interest. But the idea that there's this kind of debate, to me at least, the debate is over. Uh, we need all hands on deck. We need to get a thousand shots on goal. There's, there's some things that are uh, tens of years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, millions of years. We need to figure out how to develop uh, across the board, better solutions uh, for all of them. And we need to stop wasting our time figuring out if it matters if something is a natural solution or a technological solution. And that's why Airminer's Launchpad supports a range of different companies pulling carbon from the air. What we care about is permanence. What we care about is that you know how permanent your solution is and that you know how to make it work. Maybe you hold on to carbon dioxide, maybe you've got an amazing solution that's super cheap that holds on to carbon dioxide for only a year. I'd be super curious to hear about it. Maybe you have a solution that uh, holds on for tens of thousands of years. Let's hear about that too. There's everything in between. We need to figure it out. Uh, and, and that's how we're looking at companies across the board at, at Airmire's Launchpad. We're not looking about whether this is natural or uh, technical or if it does it come from the ocean or does it come from the air? Does it come from uh, mineralization? What we look at is permanence. And I recommend everybody watch this session on supply curve modeling from air miners. There's a bunch of other insights uh, that I have from it uh, around uh, this idea of, of constraining future supply uh, and kind of be, kind of over optimizing for for quality right now actually has potential to to massively lower our future supply potential. Thought that was super interesting, so I'd, I'd be curious to talk more about that later. Um, and just isn't it so freaking cool this this emerged from all these people getting together, analyzing data, and you know, they got they got together with the Stripe team to talk about it publicly and to inspire more startups to figure out, uh, you know, kind of where do they focus? How do they frame? What, uh, where are they at in terms of permanence? So go check that out and uh, let me know what you think.